Hello, everyone. Glad today to have my friend, longtime friend, Jim Laidlaw joining me. And we're going to be just talking about uh, just being a disciple and just being, being a disciple of Jesus Christ and, and making disciples. And Jim and I have served in some ministry teams together over the years and um, worked in the kitchen and served a lot of people, a lot of great food. And Jim's quite the chef. And, and uh, But, you know, this is just a chance to kind of um, just kind of pick your brain a little bit, Jim. So I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you, Steve. It's my honor. Well, um, last time I saw you, I was there at that barbecue that uh, Brian yeah. Emmons and some others had put together. And and uh, I, I got thinking after that, I'm like, man, I need to talk to Jim. I need to just ask you. And um, you've got you've got a really cool story. And, and I just kind of wanted to maybe capture that uh, for for the for, for people that are interested in, in this discipling book that's coming out. And um, I appreciate that. So why don't you do this? Why don't you tell me a little bit about your personal journey? And uh, like, like, when did you become a Christian? When did you become a follower of the Lord? Well, I grew up uh, as a Catholic going to St. Joan of Arc uh, grade school. So we went to church all the time. Okay. Uh, so I knew of Jesus, uh, but not really connected to him. Uh, it wasn't until, uh, my goodness, the year 2000 or so, okay. that Ron Blancano, a buddy of mine from Christ the Savior, invited me off to a Vita Cristo weekend. Okay. And that's when I, the lid came off and I was exposed to, uh, what being a Christian was and, uh, all of the uh, heartfelt giving and things of that. I've always done these things, but I had no outlet or understanding of these things. Right. So that's really when I became connected to Jesus at that point in time. Okay. And so somewhere around 2000, so approximately yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, I, I know, um, I, I know you, you serve in a lot of different roles over the years, um, yes. you know, helping out in like great banquet. And, um, I know you've also done a lot with Kairos prison ministry. Yes. And, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and how that's been an impact on your life? Well, uh, it's been a great impact on my life. Um, I'm going to back up a little bit. Sure. Uh, so in 19, I'm, this picture will come up. I don't know if this will show or not. Oh, yeah. It looks fine. So you see the date on that? It says 96. Yep. So that's Antoine Whitney. I was in the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program back then. Antoine was my little brother. Okay. Uh, and uh, he was 14 years old. And, I knew, again, I knew I wanted to give and do things way back when. Again, I didn't know how to punch through that. Right. Uh, he taught me more <laughs> than I taught him as far as understanding, picking up him at his home, seeing his home, talking to him and understanding conversations about simple things in life that I took for granted. Uh, I can't recall any one particular conversation, but I can tell you that those conversations were impactful and powerful to me because that made me understand that, uh, I was, I'm a blessed man. We're all blessed men. Yeah, but uh, he came from a different place, and uh, he taught me a lot. So by him wanting, he and his mom wanting him to get into the Big Brothers program, uh, probably, and I've, not, I've lost contact with him, unfortunately, over the years, okay. probably saved his life. And I say that because now I'm going to talk about Kairos. So I have done 14 Kairoses in seven years. That's two wow. a year. Wow. And there's 42 offenders. That's always a full team, uh, a full complement of offenders, of 42 offenders each time. Okay. Uh, and, I've, and I've been honored and I've served in virtually every position uh, inside of Kairos, including leading one. Uh, and to, a, to an offender, uh, it is a – male role model father figure that they're in there uh, they 
got into gangs because they didn't have a father figure, so they wanted to get attached to something. Right. And so this is how they got a hold of it. So once I got in and understood that, it brought me back to Antoine and right. Uh, right. and and the impact that I had there. So now Kairos has had, has had an impact on me because we go in there to minister to them, but in fact, they are ministering to us, just like Antoine did to me. Right. Uh, just to understand, to listen to these men talk uh, about their lives, how blessed they are, <laughs> and how thankful they are. We, we go through a weekend, and the offenders uh, are not a homogenous group of uh, Christians. Right. They are Buddhists, atheists, American Indian, Vikings. And so you get a and you name it, it's in there in right. the weekend. And it's very interesting to note that we are there and the team coming in, uh, we're like lost cousins. Uh, we only see each other at team meetings and on the weekend. And so. And, and you meet for like weeks leading up to one of those weekends, weeks, right? Eight, eight weeks, eight weeks eight, before the event. Okay. Mm -hmm, eight Very cool. team meetings coming into that. Yes. Uh, Cause that builds us on our team. So these guys, the offenders think we're all seeing each other all the time and going to the same church. In fact, we're not. Right. Uh, right. But, uh, and we go in there, we don't care what these guys have done. All we care about is what's in their heart. Right. Uh, these, a lot of these guys come into a weekend with a lot of hate, a lot of hatred, a lot of bigotry, uh, uh, racism in their hearts. And right. all that stuff is taught to them. Right. It's not a, le it's a learned behavior. And right. by the time the weekend is over, uh, again, Christ shows up, he shows out. Uh, these guys are... Aryan Brotherhood and the Muslims are hugging it out. Really? Uh, and so it's powerful. And that yeah. sends ripples and shockwaves through the camp because that gets well known very quickly out there. And that's right. very tough for them because one of the talks we talk about in Great Banquet and, and in uh, Kairos is the environment. Right. These guys are in an enclosed environment. They cannot escape it. Right. They can't and get so away. Yeah. They cannot get away. Yeah. And so if these guys, you know, change their ways, they are changing their ways knowing that they, the re repercussions of this could be serious right. and they do it anyway. Right. That's powerful to me. Uh, and, transformation. And transformation. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And all we did was just show up and give them, you know, the X number of talks and, and let them, sure. let them do their deal. Right. Yeah. And, and for, for those who may not be familiar with that kind of model, it's, it's done over the course of a few days and there's just speakers throughout the day that just share their story and share their heart and, and um, just point people to Christ and, and uh, you know, just uh, are vulnerable and they just share their real, I mean, you know, they take the mask off and they share what's really going on. It's what, it, 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 why do you think the Kairos is, or Kairos or Great Banquet or Via de Cristo or any of those other models, what, why do you think those are so powerful in the prison? Why do you think that really works so well? We disarmed them. Uh, love, love, listen, listen. Uh, these guys on the first day are coming down there with their scowls and uh, arms crossed and you know, and so we just walk them through the process. There are talks just like any other weekend. And after a talk, they have table discussions. You know, there are six offenders at a table, three team leader or three team at a mm. table. Mm. Uh, and then they'll do a poster. And then you have the next talk. And then we go through that with 15 talks, I believe, uh, and throughout the weekend. And each one builds on the one prior to that. Mm -hmm. And like every weekend, the Via de Cristo or Great Banquet weekend, rarely will you remember the outline of the talk being given but you remember the content of the human giving his talk his personal testimony yeah. that's what sticks with these guys yeah uh, a lot of these guys have never understood or been taught uh or been exposed to some very simple concepts of as far as responding to something versus uh god i forget the other term for it uh reacting so right. these guys would react to things all the time versus oh, responding. Yeah. Right. And so we would talk about those things and you can just see them melt over time. The next day they come in, they're a little more friendly and jovial and talking. And by the time Saturday comes around in the gymnasium over here at Pendleton, where I go, uh, 
you know, we're high-fiving each other and we're hugging each other and these guys are starting to hug each other. And so they even say that, that when, by the third day, which would be Saturday, they, they know they're in prison, but they're not in prison when they're right. coming there. Now. They're understanding this is a different environment altogether. And the yeah. entire camp knows that we're there. Yeah. Well, and it, it, it's, it's kind of like an oasis of love and brotherhood and friendship um, inside, you know, they're behind walls, but, but it's kind of like an oasis where people can just maybe be themselves and they can kind of develop friendships and love that out there in the yard, it wasn't really, you can't do that out there, you know? So that's it, correct. You know, crying or la or crying or hugging is, is seeing as a sign of weakness. Yeah. Down here, these guys are bawling their eyes out, hugging on each other, you know, and uh, it's quite the transformation and you're correct in that. And, you know, once we're done, you know, they have a, a prayer and share. Uh, once we're done with the weekend, they have a prayer and share that they can go on Saturdays and the Kairos alumni can go to the chapel and they can all reunite, reunion together and right. pray and, and, and do all of these things and stay connected like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, beautiful. Well, and you know, if you if you think about um, just the gospel and and you know, just throughout the New Testament, we see you know, like Jesus saying, you know, they will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You know, and um, and just that being able to share the love of God and be able to share the love of each other, and you know, people can feel that, and it's just sometimes it's so revolutionarily different that they don't they're like, wow, it's kind of mind blowing. Uh, Daryl Pitts has told me uh, some stories yeah. from, uh, from serving on Kairos. And yes. uh, it was just like, wow, I wish I could, I, I've never experienced a Kairos weekend, but may, maybe someday I can do that. But, I hope but you um, get to. typically like if you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody, you know, maybe it's outside of Kairos because Kairos is kind of a structured weekend that is designed to share the love of God with people. And, um, but like, if, if it's just you talking to your neighbor or your, you know, I, I know you were a, a remodeler and a, and a contractor and, and a mm -hmm. you know, carpenter and all that. If, you know, if you're just talking with somebody, um, and you know, you're, you're working together or, you know, it's just a friend, how do you typically engage people with, uh, with your Christian faith? You know, how do you typically share the gospel or, or, you know, in the past, what, uh, how would you say you normally do that? I let the situation, I don't, uh, I was just talking to my nephew, my great nephew sitting right here to my left. Oh, okay. About this today. Uh, uh, I don't force anything. I let the situation sure. present itself. Right. And it does present itself. And so whatever that opportunity is, I, I go with it. Uh, just through conversation and talking to people, you know, I want to get, I don't know, I don't want to know what's in their head. I want to know what's in their heart. And then once I'm there, then they'll say something and then I'll probe a little bit and then they'll start opening up. And then that's when I get to talk and I just talk a little, if anything, I'm just rolling up next to them and being quiet and being there, being present for them. Right. Uh, uh, and so the, the guys that worked for me all clearly understood who I was and what was going on. And I did have an effect on them. Uh, because they told me I did. Okay. And so uh, and I, and I'm thankful and I'm blessed. Now with customers, you know, you got to be careful about walking into a customer's house and thumping on the Bible. Right. You just don't know who they are. Right. You know, but I, I'm the one that went out and did the estimates. And so I, I purposely par parked my truck in such a manner that was straight out in front of their front door. They could see the logo on the truck and it was nice. And I dressed nice and I looked nice and, and I presented myself nice. And so when we go in inside the house, I just observe the house and we talk. And, uh, and again, I would let the situation present itself. If it didn't present itself, I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it did, then I would just start talking to them about that. And eventually, uh, we start talking about the crosses that I would make, that I made. Right, right. And so then we'll have to the make sure to talk about that too. So thank you, thank you. <laughs> and so the next day, uh, or if we won the job, which we normally did, I would bring them a cross or crosses nice. for them to have. And so eventually, I learned <laughs> just to have crosses in the truck all the time. Yeah. So I can walk out and get it and bring it back. And once it 
it was laid into their hand, it didn't come back. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't anything forced, it was just genuine, genuine conversation, heartfelt. Right. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not a guy that knows a lot of Bible verses. Uh, I just know what the Bible says to do. Right. And so I do those things the best way I know how. What, and I what, know would you how say, to... what would you say are those main things that you know what to do and you do them? What, what would you say those things are? Oh, just being respectful, kind, mm -hmm. uh, you know, empathetic, listening, understanding. You know, you look them in the eye, firm handshake. So it's all those things that uh, reassure the customer that you're good at what you say you are, you're a good human being. And that, and that comes from the fact that because of Jesus, I'm a good human being. Uh, and so that come, for me, that's what comes across. Very good. I love that. And, and I, I wish I, I moved recently and um, I know I've got one in my truck and I forgot to bring it in. Do you have any of your little crosses, your little wood? Oh, there you go. Okay. So Jim, I remember when Jim first gave me the first one of those, um, he, he's a crossaholic. And uh, Jim, why don't you explain kind of the shape of the cross and the measurements and the three sixteenths and all that stuff. So, so, so this, so this cross is different than this cross, the balance right. one, right? Right. So which one, which one you want, bud? I don't care. You pick. All right. So this cross is actually a Kairos cross. Uh, and I call it a Kairos cross because uh, Matthew 25, 36, which is, again, I'm going to paraphrase because I'm not a, mm -hmm. a Bible guy. Oh, that's that fine. Manner. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, you, you came, you saw, you fed, uh, and you helped me and all this good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so this is how I understand the Bible. This is how I relate it to me. And so I can relate it to others. Mm -hmm. So how do I, Jimmy Laidlaw, relate Matthew 25, 36 to others in my way? And so since I make crosses and I do sawdust, and by the way, it's, I've gained that nickname as being sawdust, and, and I am a crossaholic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not repenting on that. Right, but, right, uh, right. <laughs> uh, and so it dawned on me one day out in the shop while I was doodling away uh, that if I take 25 and 36 and divide by 12 i come up with this size nice and that's 12 being the 12 apostles mm -hmm. so this is how this cross came to that size okay that's so that size right there palm size uh and so the cross is red it's a paduke wood it's naturally red like that um and that represents jesus's blood mm -hmm. and so the nail to the center right there represents uh, his, him taking our hurts, habits, hangups, burdens, and sins into his heart. And that's what that nail is for. He, yeah. We pound that thing in and he takes it because it was the nails, wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. It was his heart. And so he's well, taking it right yeah. in his heart. And so this is actually a prayer cross and it's not supposed to be comfortable to hang on to. Right. It has sharp corners and all that. Because in time, the round, there's nothing comfortable about being on the cross. This is true. So in time, the wood will round off and it'll become brown like dried blood and it becomes mm -hmm. very dark, dark brown. Mm -hmm. But that nail will always be there to remind you when you grab a hold of that thing that he has done that for you. And so that's what this is. And you're right. I've, I've held mine before. And no matter how you hold it, you can feel the nail. You know, you can feel the mm -hmm. nail punching into your, or, you know, pushing into your palm. And uh, it's kind yes. of, it's, uh, it's a great prayer cross. So thank you. The, thank you. The, big, the big one, the leaner, does it have any, uh, I know, go ahead and share that one. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So this guy, I want to, we'll do it in the air. Uh, this guy would be a solid piece of wood. Uh, so this represents you, me, everybody else on earth. Right. Uh, in order to stand with Christ and balance, I may have to I'll move this machine here in a minute. We need to give up our hurts, hangups, hang hurts, habits, hangups, burdens, and sins. Get rid of them. Let go. Let me see what I can do here for Stevie. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. So this guy, he still falls down, but at least he can start to stand because we're not right. going to steal that away, right? Right. So now, in order to stay standing, we need to become connected to jesus and this is your prayers we're connected to jesus through prayer so that becomes connections 
there. Now the cross, like, come here, you, like this guy right here, yeah, is that hurts habits, hangeth, burdens, and sins, nail in there. That's what that represents the same thing right there. Yeah. But now, when Jesus, when we become connected to Jesus, we're able to stand and turn around and base and all that good stuff and have fun, right? I love that. We're able to do that, right? So now the wedge, back up. So now the wedge that you get with your cross, this is not your wedge. It's somebody else's wedge. Right. And this is what you pray for is somebody else's hurts, habits, hangups, burdens, and sins. Yeah. And so of all of this that's here, this is really what it's about is praying for others and helping others. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what that cross represents. Love that. Love that. Thank you. Well, I remember hearing you explain that the first time, and I was like, wow, that is so cool. It was it really impacted me. And so I, I know it's impacted other people throughout the years. So um I guess so if I may, if I may, sure. On another note on these crosses. So I've made I've made thousands of these crosses. Right in my time and so there were some girls out of fort wayne that have been through a lot of via de cristo weekends and made a lot of crosses for those guys comes to find out that the girls <laughs> trade wedges really yeah so they're praying for somebody else wow no clue, right? yeah so just because i it came from him through me to do that. Yeah. But that so they, they're trading wedges to get rid of their own and, and praying, praying for their sisters. Huh? That is cool. That's right. Uh, or somebody else's deal. That's right. That's neat. That's neat. Thanks. So um, I guess if, if you were going to like share um, like the most important thing about being a disciple of the Lord is to blank. And then the most important thing about making disciples would be blank. What what would you say are the most important attributes of, of the? And I know that's a big question, but but mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess what well, you know. What's your initial reaction to that? Well, uh, I'm going to go back to twenty Matthew twenty five thirty six. That's okay. in addition to John three sixteen. But John three sixteen is, is is you need to believe right. But 25, 30, Matthew 25, 36 is action by somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's how I do what I do uh, is by I go visit people. I roll up next to them. I'll feed them. I'll give them money. Even if I don't have it, I'll still do that. Right. Uh, and I'll listen and be compassionate. Uh, and so now whether I make a disciple out of them or not is not my goal. Uh, that is up to God to do that. I'm simply there to offer me and what I can do for them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's the old adage that you can lead a horse to water, but good luck on trying to drown it. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny. That's good. <laughs> it's true too. It's Try true to drown them sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so I, and and the more that I get to be around people who who want me around then the more they become disciples if you will because so what do i i'm a sinner like anybody else right i'm just like anybody else it's just that i i go about my life with him in my heart the best way i know how right. uh, and so i just and i think of my crosses and things that i've done and things that uh things that i have done that I don't want to do again. So I'm actually more interested in somebody knowing somebody in the value of what they don't want versus what they want. Right. Because I can tell you real quickly that I don't want to get hit in the hand with a hammer. Right. Adamantly. But I don't know if I like ice cream or not. So I like ice cream. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the more I, the more that I know about somebody, what they don't want. Now I know what they actually do want. It pairs it down. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you. So uh, last question here. Um, the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. <laughs> and 
knowing you for many years, um, I see a lot of those fruits exhibited in a lot of different ways. And thank you. Um, and um, the, the the question becomes, you know, how would you say that you have? Uh, how do you feel that that God moves you or speaks to you to exhibit the fruits of the Spirit? What you know, is there any? Do you have any insights on that? Uh, I've always been told that you know I wear my heart on my sleeve. Yes. And so I, I have a natural empathy for people and I want to help them. Um, and people may or may not know, uh, I had been diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer stage. I'm stage four, so I'm terminal and it's spread to my bone. The cancer spread to my bones. Mm -hmm. So once I was diagnosed with that and understood that my understanding of all those things that you just rattled off, became much clearer. Uh, there was an old saying in my family when mom and dad were trying to discipline or teach us something. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. So the day that my mom and dad passed away, I knew. And so I had to know because I couldn't go back to the well. Right. So the same thing happened to me twice now, uh, that the day that I was diagnosed with all of this, now I know. So I can't undo that. So now my, my effort or my sincere, I thought I was sincere before. <laughs> I'm much more sincere about it now. I'm much more adamant about it now. Mm -hmm. uh, things, a lot of things just don't make any difference anymore. Right. Uh, uh, kind of helps so you put, put the world in perspective, doesn't it? <laughs> very, very quickly. Yeah. Very quickly. Right. So, yeah. A lot of this baloney that's going on now just doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. It does, but it doesn't to me. <laughs> right, right. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Well, you, you said to me the other day, you said, you know, hey, I, I'm looking forward to being with the Lord. And uh, whenever that happens, whenever that happens, and whether that's today or tomorrow or six months or a year from now or two years from now, I mean, and every one of us can say that same thing. I don't know that I'm going to be here tomorrow. I might. I might drop dead of a an aneurysm, you know, in five minutes. I don't know. Yeah, or that's I'm, exactly right. Yeah, but it's, uh, I, I love your heart and I love your perspective. Um, and um, I guess in, any final thoughts that you want to just leave with people that, uh, that, uh, that I can, you know, maybe put in the book or any final <laughs> thoughts about just being a Christian and, and just uh, following the Lord? Uh get with it <laughs> get on it because uh this is your one and only opportunity this is not a dry run uh and at one time i thought i was you know invincible and all that good stuff right no this is it this is the real deal uh, and get out of your head and get into your heart let your heart do the driving versus your head I understand we have to be logical and do certain things, but right. once you allow your heart to get after it, then you're starting to figure out and understand what Jesus has been talking about all the time. Again, back to Kairos. It's called listen, listen, love, love. All I care about, or all the Kairos team members are care about, is what's happening inside the heart of that offender. We don't care about the head. It's the heart right. that we're after. Right, right. No, I love that. I love that. And they, they I, I've heard it said a million times, you know, well, sometimes the longest distance is between the head and the heart. And you may, you may have intellectual understanding, mm -hmm. but until it becomes kind of at your core, who you are as a person and, and it, it lives in your, in your innermost being, mm -hmm. uh, it's not just some weird intellectual concept in your brain, but it actually becomes part of who you are and how you live that out. And um, I, I yeah. love that. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. And I was asked, I was talking to Simon earlier today, we were talking about this and uh, about God's timing. I don't even, I don't, I don't look for God's timing. I, I'm just, it appears, right? Mm -hmm. You know, what do I do? It's, oh, there's my opportunity. Just right. like we talked about discipleship and talking to people. There's my opportunity. Yep. So yep. I don't try to force anything. I just, I'm there and I'll present it. And I may say one or two words to somebody or just be there, make a comment or go kind of, I'm sorry, you know, what can I do for you type thing? And, and no one's ever said anything like that to them before. I've had that happen before. No one's ever talked to me like that. My, when I was married, uh, 
uh, my last marriage, uh, her son had a bunch of friends that would come over. And this is when I was going doing the Via de Cristo and Great Banquet. I hadn't done Kairos yet. Mm -hmm. But I would talk to them in such a manner, just like you and I are talking. And I had a couple of guys say to me, says, no one's ever talked to us like that. And I said, mm -hmm. you okay? And he goes, no, we love it. And so it's just very straightforward type stuff. And so that, that affirms to me that I'm on the right track. Yeah. Or that he has me on the right track. Well, and I, that's one thing I love about you, Jim, is uh, you're real. And I, I don't like fake people. I like real yeah. people. And, yeah. uh, you know, I know with you, you don't have a mask on. It's just, you'll just tell me. COVID beard. <laughs> <laughs> you'll just tell me how it is. So, yes. hey, man, yeah. thank you so much for doing this interview today. And uh, I'm just truly blessed to be your friend. And, and uh, I look forward to, to processing all the stuff we talked about. And I hope I can get some good stuff in the book for that. So, Steve, thank I'm, you, I'm honored and blessed, and thank you very much, and anytime, Burrow. Very cool. Well, hey, talk to you soon. Thanks, you, everybody, man. for watching. Thank you. Let's see.